Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of It's My Job to Know Yours. Today we are sitting with a really, really special guest, World Cup champion 2011, four-time champion of the uh, Baltimore Blast, one of the best goalkeepers in all of soccer, and uh, I'm honored that you found the time to uh, sit down with us. Of course, I'm talking about uh, Baltimore's very own William Vanzella. William, thank you so much for being here today. Uh, thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, of course, of course. I mean, you know, you're getting you to um, just come to the studio has been <laughs> challenging to say the least. You're of all the guests I've ever booked for the studio. You're probably one of the busiest. Every time I reach out, you know, you're in uh, you're in Florida for a game. You're in yeah. a photo shoot here. You're you're there. Your 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 career is so huge and 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 impressive. So for real, you know. The fact that you took the time to be out here on my little podcast it really, really means a lot to me. Um, let's start from the very, very beginning. You're a soccer player. You're pretty well known. Did you know your whole life that you wanted to be a soccer player? Uh, I dreamed my whole life to be a soccer player. So I did not know I would get that far, but I had that dream since I was four. Really? Yes. Was it something that happened? Was it something that you saw? Was it something you did that, that gave you that bug? Or was it just like four years old, you just knew? Uh, honestly, you don't know, but in Brazil, I'm born and raised in Brazil, so Brazil, we breed soccer, so everything we do is soccer. Um, since I was, you know, walking, I got a soccer ball from my dad, and I was kicking around, and became, you know, the love of my life. So when I was four, all I wanted to do is play soccer, and as the life goes, I started to, to, to take it as a, as a, that could be my job thing and, and and go from there do do a lot of kids in brazil feel like th- this could be their job this could be their career because it, it's really especially in south america soccer or football as we as they call it <laughs> out there is, is that hard for you to say by the way football i've been learning i've been in a country for long enough so i'm used to soccer right you're now. used to it now yes. when you go back to brazil it's 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 it's, it's football, it's football. Yeah. okay good yeah. um i'm you know from from where, as far as I know, a lot of my friends, especially my Latino friends, mm-hmm. love playing soccer. They're very good at soccer. They're amazing at it, but they don't pursue careers in soccer. Um, is it that you just worked harder? Are you that much better of a player? Is it because you came to America and where everyone here is not good at soccer? <laughs> <laughs> like, if, if you were in Brazil still, are you considered amazing even in Brazil? Or is it, like, because of that, the level of... of talent of soccer players out there obviously the level it's uh, it's super high then you have to think about if you want to compare countries which i always hate to do but uh we ended up doing all the time here you have at least four or five different sports that you can name it that a kid will start to play as a, as a young kid you can go from basketball baseball lacrosse um soccer uh, what else can we name it here? What am I mean? It's basketball. Yeah, and, and even even in American in the, football in the Olympics. You know, just like swimming or yeah, any, swim. any other competition. So you have a lot of options, and the kids will flow between sports, and then the competition drops a little bit because you have a lowest number of players competing on your spot, versus Brazil, that's a giant country, when every single kid wants to be a soccer player. So your competition is a lot bigger than you actually face here uh to answer your question i definitely work harder than anybody else that's for sure i've been knowing for uh extremely hard work in person um my work ethic i by far was my number one thing and i think i had a lot of other great goalkeepers on my side that they could be where i am today but they just didn't work as hard as i did so it, it's it's not enough to just be good at the sport you need to really really work your whole like center your life around it definitely uh but not only in soccer i guess in life you can have any talent that you know i i'm fairly believe in god and i think god gave us a different talent we all have a different one skill but if you don't use the two that you have and work really hard you're gonna be at the same spot so i i think whoever works harder deserve more credit and they will find more in life so did i on soccer 
hundred percent. So you're you're four years old. You get your first soccer ball. You're excited. You're whatever. When when did you take it to the next level where you go? Okay, this is what I want to do for a career because you you got signed to your very very first contract when you were sixteen. Sixteen. Yes. How how did that come about for you? Well, it, it came a lot of um, a lot different than people usually think. So again, thinking about Brazil as soccer is religion for us. Um, it may be an opportunity to change your life. Obviously, South America, uh, it's it's known for um, financial problems, and I came from a very poor family as well. So when I was nine, I started to realize that I was better than anybody else on my age. And uh, when I was 12, I was really preparing myself for what was next step. Age of 13, I was invited to go to an academy um, for a tryout. Who, who invited you to this <clears throat> academy? Um, it was a guy that watched soccer and watched all the competitions from the club and trying to pick new players. So he came to me after the game. When my parents' information reached out to my family and invited me over, I went, well, was, I was 13, and I made the, the, the academy. There was five hours away, a different city, five hours away from my family, so I started to leave on the stadium. So that when everything started to be professional because they do treat you as a professional athlete. You train in the morning and you train in the afternoon. You go to the school from seven to midnight. So that's a very tough life. You have to do six hours-ish, five, six hours soccer a day and then plus go to the school. So that's when I, I start to click that's gonna be my job. 12 years old, you're training six hours a day Five hours soccer, a day. Five yes. hours a day soccer. Yes. Still very impressive. And then yes. going to school until midnight. Yes. I, is this normal in Brazil? Yes, for the for the players that want to be soccer players and play for an academy like that. Because the reality, again, this is a business. And the academies make a lot of money off players, you know, building young guys and selling them to big clubs. That's a huge business for them. So they treat you as a business. So we need uh, to have as many as amount of hours as we can during the week training sessions, and we do focus more on soccer than actually in school. But as as a little kid, I mean, you know, I, I can understand a twelve year old saying, "Yeah, I want to be a soccer player. It's so much fun." You know, like ooh, it, it's you know the perks or whatever. But eleven year old kid, they want to go to the movies. They want to hang out with their friends. They want to like. How, how do you get into that mindset of like five hours a day, school till midnight, being in that as a little kid? Is it? Yeah, well, again, that's the dream of your life. And then you have to understand that the driving that you get has to be more and higher than anybody else. Because at the end of the day, this is a business and they, they can get you and replace you as they want. So if you don't perform, they're going to replace you. And as simple as that, like just like this, and you're gone. So if you lose an opportunity, that might never happen again. So all you have to do is work hard every single day, and each day it matters. So we it's no we had no time for fun. We train every single day, Monday to Friday. We play games on Saturday and Sundays. So you have you never had the time off. The days off you my head you ended up resting napping trying to catch up some homework and stuff like that but again you have to remember we're living in a dorm under the stadium we have no family around so it's no place for you to go you have no money and you have you can't move you don't have a car so you just stay uh, at the place so at, at this age you're living underneath the stadium you're you know you have your coach essentially or the, the, the person who, who got you into the academy? Yeah, it's no. He is just a person that uh, look up and find me there. Once we sign the contract, they have a person in charge of the dorms. They have a person in charge of the team. They have a person in charge of everything. It's a business. It's a huge business. And this, this contract you signed, so this may, was a professional team you were playing for? Yes, but then once you're 13, you're not allowed to sign a professional contract. What I sign, I sign... Uh, just a term that I will play for them, but not professionally. So, so uh, like they couldn't pay you? They couldn't pay me. And that's when I started to struggle because my dad was sick and my mom was pregnant. So we had no money income in, like for my family and I had to make a decision. So I had to pretty much talk to them and, and, and try to figure something out. And because they could not pay me, 
we had an agreement that they would pay for every single uh, bill that my family had. So they started to pay my family's bills back into my house and uh, really? groceries and everything. Yes. So y you were that good. Um, I was good, but they, I'm not an exception. They do that for every other player that is playing for the academy because they're trying to keep you there. Uh, okay, as so long as you're good, as, yes. as long as as long as you're producing and you're and yes. because obviously you know like like we we talked about Brazil the the, the soccer talent is you know on everyone yep. is is really really passionate about the sport really really good at it and to get into this academy how hard is it to get into this academy oh really hard yes the competition is huge the they try out kids every week it's probably what hundred to hundred kids a week trying to get on your spot it's 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 crazy if you if you go. In Brazil, you would understand it's a huge competition, and uh, once you get in, you have to do everything you can to stay in. And and how, how long did you stay at this uh, this academy for? Seven years, about yes. So I was there from ninety nine to two thousand six, two thousand six. Yes. Where did you go from there? Then from there, so when I was sixteen, I was uh, able to sign my first professional contract, and then start the real get paid. Um, I played there until I was 17, on 18. Then they tr they trade me for another club I, in Brazil. And then from that club, I was traded to a club in Italy. So then I moved to uh, Italy. When you get traded, do you have a say in this? Do you say, I don't want to go there, I don't want to go here? Or are you just kind of being like, hey, William, by the way, pack your bags, you're heading to this club? Um, it's not like here, like uh, baseball, they tell you, you trade, you have to leave. You do have a say. Most of the time, your say don't matter, but you do have a say. Do you have, in, in order to, to play professional soccer, um, do you need like an agent kind of or someone who represents you or do you represent yourself and make your own choices for your own career? Much harder without an agent when you start. So basically, if you want to start, you need to have connections and the agent will come to help you. Um, so basically, you need to have an agent to start. Once you establish, an agent will help you. But I, I would say once you're young, you definitely need an agent until you became somebody and uh even if they take a cut but you know the work uh, it's worth it it's, a, it's the same in the acting world or any sports league mm -hmm. or anything else that you know on, on a grand scale so you get traded off into italy you're 16 17 years old you're you you are part italian though right yeah um is this your first time in Italy at that age? Yeah, yeah, yeah. First so time living in the country. You're 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 17. You're you're leaving the country. You've you've known your whole life is like living in this academy and all that. W going to Italy afterwards. Are you scared? Are you excited? Do you feel like your dreams are coming true? Like, walk me through that process a little bit. It's interesting. You know, I I don't think I was scared, but uh, I was definitely excited for the chance. Um, obviously, when you when you playing professional you want to be on the highest level and Italy was and still be one of the highest country for soccer so I was super excited about and I was very concerned about not knowing the language and uh, you know back in the when I went you did not have Google or, or cell phone that could help you translate stuff so you had to have your own book and and check your book but I was not scared I, I was really facing that as a great opportunity and I and I you know, it really was. And and you went for one goal, just soccer. That's your that's your thing. Absolutely, it's, you're gonna. Yeah, yeah. It's not like unstoppable. And then, w w what year was this that you went into? Uh, 2006. Italy? 2006. And then, in 2011, you win the world championship um, of the the World Cup. Yeah. How did that come about for you that you got to get onto the team for the uh, world championship, the World Cup? Yeah, so um, I was uh, fortunately enough to have my grandparents from uh, Italy or originally, so I'm dual citizenship, um, Brazilian and Italian. Is that why you got traded to Italy? Uh, that helped a lot because once you we have a citizenship, you're not uh, a, like a um, visa uh, player, mm -hmm. and uh, each league has just an amount of visa players that you can carry on it. So if you treat it as a Italian player, you, they can have as many as they want. So it become easier. So it definitely helped me to get to Italy, and also allows me to be able to play for the national uh, team as well. And I was really 
happy about. Uh, if I could choose, I would definitely choose Brazilian national team over the Italian, but you have to make a choice. And Italy opened the door for the business. And if you think about my job as a business as well, mm -hmm. uh, I love soccer, but it, it's how I, you know, I survive, how I pay my bills and how I, you know, maintain my family back in Brazil. So I had the opportunity and I never uh, thought twice. The tournament actually was played in, in Brazil. So it was pretty interesting hearing all the fans, you know, cursing me the whole game. <laughs> so, so, it was Brazilian. so you're you're a Brazilian man playing for an Italian team in Brazil. Against Brazil. No one knows who to root for. Against Brazil. Against Brazil. Yeah, so only my family watching the the game on the TV, I guess, was cheering for me. Did you did you have a complex with it? Did you feel like you were like cheating on Brazil? No, that's that you know, and this is when the point comes that y you're doing your job and you have to be good at your job. So I was grateful for the opportunity and I treat that not as a, a country game. I treat it as a game of my job. So I was right. trying to do my job well. Obviously, mixed feeling here and there, uh, and you're hearing them, and obviously even the players are uh, saying a lot of stuff during the game. They're trying to get you out of your game, uh, obviously. But uh, I think it was interesting. Definitely it's something, you know, when that was over, it was a good laugh, but during <laughs> the course and before, it was it was interesting. And and during during the game, you, you win. You, you were playing goalie yes. at the time. T describe to me the feeling of winning the world cup you know in your home country brazil granted not for the team but even so just you're, you're at the height of your career what, 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 what was that like for you did you did you feel like wow all my dreams have come true everything that i was training for since i was nine years old in the academy like this describe me the feeling a little bit i guess when you win anything you have a f feeling of in a mix of memories right then what i always think when I'm in preseason, when I have to work out, when I have to do things that it, they're challenge for me, I try to think, what do I want to accomplish? So every time you're trying to prepare yourself to play a tournament, to play a league, to play whatever you play, you're trying to dream about winning. And I always dream about winning. So once you win, that it comes out the memories that my memories actually that came was like how hard do I had to work all the train sessions that I left the field barely walking and 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 I knew that would be worth it someday and so uh it's a very pleasurable feeling but it also makes you think that your life is worth it so everything you've done it's a reason for and you believe in something that probably nobody else did and I love challenge, so that was a good one. Really, um, so m moving moving on, you know, you, you win you win the world championship. W where do you where do you go next? Like w w you 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 ended up here. How did you end up in Baltimore? Yeah, actually, uh, our coach was watching that those games, and uh, I had a friend playing on the indoor soccer league here in America uh, for a team in Syracuse that we used to play together back in Brazil at the academy. And um, he always told me about and showed me some videos about the indoor soccer. I was curious, and then uh, the coach, he reached out to him, they talk, and I ended up here. Really, and when, when you ended up here in Baltimore, you switched from arena soccer or outdoor, outdoor soccer, soccer into indoor, indoor soccer. arena yes. soccer. Um, was that transition hard for you? Was that something you felt like was better for your career? Did you, what, what was the thought process behind that? Uh, off the field wise, I was really excited because I felt like a great opportunity. You know, I we always knew that um, things are done correctly here and not that much in other places. So especially financially wise, uh, I knew that the money that was promised to me would be delivered, and I struggle with that in Italy, especially. And uh, transition on the field, it's it's a lot of changes on it the size of the game, the, the field, the size of the, the ball, the number of the players, the speed of the play. Uh, indoor soccer do have boards around, so you have to learn how to play and adjust for that, the, the dimensions of the goal. So there are a lot of changes in there, but I I think I was capable to pick uh, quick enough on the, on my first training sessions and, and adjust fast to be able to play. 
when when you say that you know you, you knew that they would give you the money that they promised you and, and fulfill your contracts uh, th did that not always happen for you when you were in italy and in the other places yeah uh, unfortunately you know when you're dealing with sports uh outside this country the u.s is a lot of different than uh, other countries uh you struggle with the situation that the country's been dealing uh, in italy was a bad time financially for everybody and we knew it but if your sponsor is not uh, giving the money to the club, the club would not give it the money to the players. So on my last year there and the, the the year that I decided to leave, I probably got only one or two months uh, of my paycheck out of 10 months season. Really? So you're the star player. You're the goalie. You won their championship. You're in like the, the height of your career and they can still go behind your back and not pay you your dues, not give you the money that you're owed, and you, even though you're living, breathing, and training nonstop for this team, literally injuring yourself, yep. and they don't follow through with you. Yeah, sports, you know, unfortunately a player will be treated like a, a, a number, and we know that some places are different than others, obviously, but um, it's it's hard, you know. they they If they don't have the money, they promise you something, they can um, maintain that it's nothing actually you can do. Well, you you tie your hands are tight. So, so you 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 never you never got the money you were owed. No, and you're not gonna pursue it now. No, it's just, really. So you 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 come in you you come to Baltimore and you really create the team essentially the Baltimore Blast. You know you you're the most well known player. I mean I I know the team existed before you, but when. At least as far as I know, when I, I have friends, we're like the Baltimore Blast. Oh, William, William, he's the one we cheer for. He's the only, you're, you're the only name that I really know from the team. Um, have you have you always been a, a goalie? What made you want to be a goalie? Is that something that you when they say, hey, we just need this position filled? Do you want it? Like, how do you, how do you decide what player, what what position you're going to play on the team? When I was a kid, I was playing on the field, and uh, I was uh, probably seven, eight years old. We had a game, a semifinal, and uh, our go goalkeeper got in a car accident. Nothing major really happened, but he couldn't get to the game in time. So our coach said that we need a goalkeeper, and I said, oh, I'll do it. I had no clue what I was doing, actually, but I said, <laughs> I'll do it. Um, don't have many memories. I remember the day, but I don't have memories of the game. Apparently, I did pretty well that he came to my parents on the – next game and, and said that I was really talented and I was born with that talent. So God gave me that and, you know, never ever trained or anything and, and, and played well. So he told my parents that I should just be a goalie forever. You know, I listened to him. It's like, whatever my coach saying, he, he knows what he's doing. I don't. So he told me be a goalie. I was like, okay. So then <laughs> I played the game. We won. And then I became a goalie from there. But I, the, the bottom line is I always wanted to be a goalie because I honestly hate the run. So <laughs> really, <laughs> yeah, I'm not a big uh, fan of. So I was it was a big challenge. So I was like always that guy. Oh, I don't want to run all the way across there and then come back over here and do it again and over and over. I rather to stay on this place, get beat up, get shots in the face, and get you know that's probably a better taken than actually. So it's, it's less it's less exercise. Like it's almost like saying it's like the lazy position to be on the team, but in reality, it's not. Yeah, you could say that once you watch it an outdoor game, you see a goalie that doesn't do much on the field. Um, but we always trying to explain that uh, a field player have to perform a hundred percent of his body in the game so he needs to run he needs to sprint it, it takes a lot on his body so the, on the player's body so during the course of the week after that game he has to take a day or two to relax and, and and get healthy and prepare himself so the week of sessions are a lot more mentally than physically and for the goalkeeper it's completely opposite once you see a game you don't see a goalkeeper doing much during the course of the game. So you think that he's just lazy staying there. Uh, but during the week, a goalkeeper worked twice, three times harder than anybody else because you have to get as many reps to be prepared for one or two reps during the game. So then your game became a mental, mental game. So you have to be physically prepared from the week, yes, but the game has to be mental 
set up on your mind. So you play a mental game. How, how do you prepare yourself mentally for this, to, for each time you go out there in the game? Always a challenge. It's never easier because when it's your goal, you're under uh, pressure 100% of the time that you touch the ball. Every time you make a mistake, it's visible. Everybody will know. Everybody will notice. It goes to the highlights, and, and that's what people will look for to see it. Um, so it's a challenge. Preparing yourself mentally is always a challenge. What I try to do is the night before the game, get a, a good dinner, um, uh, eat eat well, and and try to relax, try to get my mind out of the game. I always watch the game that... Um, that we played against that team or the team played the last game, try to see what they done on the last game, set pieces. And, you know, so the players that we play against tried to pick up something that could help me during the game. But uh, before bed, you start to prepare your mind for a game in a positive way. I want to do this. I want to do that. This is what I'm going to tell the players. And uh, I'm going to focus on this versus that. But the positive attitude means a lot to a keeper because once you, once you step on the field, and I tell all the kids that I coach too, you're a goalie, you set up the fail. And this is the reality. A goalkeeper is set the fail because we don't take credit. It's rarely that you see a goalkeeper taking a credit for anything. Uh, a save is a save. When they score a goal, that's what it goes on the team. That's what gets celebrated. That's how. That's always the thing. So the goalie gets the blame. And the strikers gets the the the, so you, the you, glory. You get all the blame. You get none of the credit. Maybe that's why you're probably the most famous one on the team. You know, they. <laughs> I I think. Look, <laughs> I, what I'm saying it's true. But I I I'm being very blessed to be in front of those fans here in Baltimore. They they support me so much. They recognize, you know, all the work I do. And once you go to a blast game, you understand. I think the energy that I bring in the game, you won't see from other players or, you know, other keepers. And that's, again, coming on the hard work ethic. And I care too much. It's on my blood. It's on my heart. So I think I show that to everybody. And I tried to, I always tried to think that you're paying a lot of money to go watch me perform. So the least that I can do is give 100% of my heart to the game. We're going to win. We're going to lose games. I'm going to play very well. I'm going to play poorly. And it happens because we're humans. But the bottom line, I, I want to leave the field knowing that I gave everything I had. It could be a bad game, but I put my heart over there. So you, at least you recognize that. And people do. They see that. They see. And when we score the goal, I just go crazy. You know, it feels like I score because it is true. I don't have the glory to score, you know. So when they score, it feels like I do. So I go, I jump over them. And they, uh, pretty much every picture you see on my Instagram or my Facebook, I'm on top of all the guys and they're complaining because I jump and I'm, you know, <laughs> you're so fat, get out of my back. So, you know, we do, we do all that. And I, I try to engage the game. And that's what I think makes the difference to our fans. Do you do you still get nervous when you go out or play or like after this many years in the industry? Is it just work to you? Is the day that I we we spoke about this before. The day that I don't fear or don't face or don't feel anything is the day that I have to quit. I face, I fear, and I feel every single game. And before the game, the adrenaline kicks and you start to, to feel the pressure and you're obviously shaking and doesn't matter who do you play, if that's a championship game or the worst team out there, I always have that three feelings. So it, it doesn't matter if you're playing a Baltimore Blast game or if you're playing a world championship game for the World Cup, whatever it is, you have to put in your all and just go out there and just be there for the fans and be present and, and, and give it your best and just push forward and, and do what you're what you're trained to do i would say that's the difference between me and everybody else i really do that i i respect and i play the game in the game i don't care who do i play against i don't care what level is this i don't care if that it's an easy game if we're winning by five or we're losing by t three i just need to be the best and i want to be the best and beat myself so that mindset the driven that i have must be the difference. Looking back now, are you happy that your coach said you should be the the goalkeeper and not one of the strikers? Very happy. I don't think I would have made that far. You wouldn't have made it that far in the, I in the rest of. I wouldn't. Again, I, I'm so driven, but uh, 
I knew fitness wasn't my thing, so I doubt it. I would be here talking to you right now. Really, I, I, I was looking at some of your um, the coaching that you do on on Facebook and stuff. You have those videos, and I, I, I didn't even know what went into it. And I just see that you're training these kids to just dive like head head first into the ball, and they have to like <laughs> jump. Like to me, like th- th- that it's it's very very taxing physically, like jumping constantly. Do you ever have any really bad injuries? Oh, so many. We need another podcast to talk about. <laughs> that would be so long of a conversation. Um, real quick about the kids. It comes down again. The, some kids do have the talent, man. I, I really think God gives us different talents. And those kids that are coming, the, they're looking for me. M- few of them, they do have the talent. So it's not much of me telling them what to do. Is trying to just explain how do you not get hurt doing this? You know, that will be the main thing. Do you ever um, have a, a, a student or a kid that you coach and you go, okay, that's the one. This kid has a future as oh, a soccer yeah, player. Oh, yeah, absolutely. You, you can tell. You can tell. There are a few kids right there that you can definitely tell. Do you ever um, look at a kid and go, like, buddy, you just don't have it? Can you tell that to someone or is that not your place? I, well, I do. But I have to be really careful because, uh, you know, as a mentor, as a coach, as an adult, we can really destroy kids' dreams. And I don't think I, I can do that to them. But I can give you a quick example. I was doing some individual sessions with this guy. He reached out to me. He's like, oh, I played uh, goalie in high school. I love it. And I got hurt. I couldn't play anymore. So I didn't play college ball. But I have always loved and I was goalkeeper. And now my son is nine years old and, he, and I want him to be a goalie. Can you train him? So, yes, let's go. So I trained him for first session and he was not good at all. Mm-hmm. But, you know, you always want to challenge yourself. And I said, oh, OK, I need to teach this kid. And a very sweet kid, very nice kid. Second session, no progress. On the third session, he was not into. And you could tell by his face. You look in his eyes, he was not having fun. And he was not enjoying. So I got his dad away from us a little bit, and I asked him, why are you here? He's like, yeah, my dad wants me to be a goalie. And I said, what do you want to be? I play baseball. And I said, so why are you here? Yeah, because I it, that's his dream. So then I went back, and I, I talked to the dad, and I said, look, I hate to do what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to train your son anymore. And uh, I really need to advise you. You got to take him where he wants to go. You making your dream come true on your kid, it's wrong. You have yeah. to let him live his own life. So let him go. Long story short, because it's, it's a big story, he actually appreciate my thoughts. And, and I said, look, I wish him all the best, but... I can train him again if he decides that he wants to come to me. And then please be it, you know. So I run to him. He came to a game two years later. And then I saw his son. So they, they came to me. And then uh, I asked, hey, how's it going? He's like, yeah, I'm playing baseball right now. I made this team and I'm doing really well. So he was this big of a smile. And that's where he wants to go. If he doesn't play pro, but at least he's enjoying, you know. Yeah, so yeah, that 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 is amazing. I mean, especially in the um, in the acting industry, you'll have a lot of you know people who wanted to be an actor or an actress or something, and then they they never made it, and then they push their kids to do pageants, they push their kids to do things, and it's like, mom, I I care about science, I don't want to be an actor, you know. And a lot of times, parents are trying to give their kids what they didn't have exactly so the the fact that you can you can recognize that because it's true you have to you couldn't do what you do if you didn't love it you couldn't do what you do if you didn't go out there every day and love the fans love the environment love what you're doing it's there's no you can have be the most talented person in the world if you're not in it mentally and emotionally then you're just not a good player because it's it comes with a lot more than just being good at the sport yeah i agree but again at the end of the day the I don't blame the dad. I I just don't think he saw it. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Because the parents want to do good for your kids, and and he meant well. He really did. But once he, we had the conversation, I think I helped him open his eyes and to see what was out there. He's like, I guess you're right. I let him be, and then you know everything went well for them. So I I know parents are running crazy here trying to get them the school, the soccer, the the cheerleader to go this the a b c lacrosse all the sports and and make it work because parents want the best sometimes they're just missing the 
see they don't see the signs that's the that's the literal definition of a soccer mom right probably it's, it's yes. the mom who's bringing their kids to, they to, to run, soccer i right. don't know how they do it i really <laughs> don't they run like crazy all over the place which is awesome i give parents a lot of credit shout out to all the moms out there oh, who yeah, are taking sure. their kids to practice and for and, sure and doing yeah everything they can let me ask you on uh, aside from the actual sport aside from the actual games there's so much more that is required of you as a person you know, you do, uh, even today on your Instagram, you were visiting a sick kid in, in the hospital in, in John Hopkins. And, yeah, she was um, awesome, by the way. Oh, my God. She was really touching. Yeah, and, and you, you know, you, you do so much philanthropy, so much work outside of just this. You know, you have your the photo shoots, there's the traveling, there's these podcasts, there's, you know, you're, there's constantly stuff going on in your life on social media and all that. Can somebody be a soccer player and just play the sport and say, I don't want to deal with the rest of this. I just want to play the game. Or is it like you need to live and breathe it and, and be this person at all times in so many more avenues in, your, in life other than just on the field? Uh, the answer of your question, if you want to just be a player and, and be a player, period, you can do it. But I think it's a, it's a big waste. And uh, I'm not even speaking from the soccer players, but a professional athlete um we have such a good uh everything is online right now so everything i do you're gonna find out so you just saw my instagram today what i did of course and we i, I this is what i feel i feel like we gotta use this to help others and you know like being a good mentor a good example so why not go out there and i try to donate my time to to cherries you know to events that can help people help others to be you know whatever animals uh, i do have you know really good relationship with um, a soft side show your soft side they help animals uh, we have uh, uh with barks uh, once a year an event that we they waive the fees for the animals to adopt the animals i ended up getting my dog from that event of course, I walked that dog, and I ended what, up with. What, what's your dog's name? Bella. Bella. All right. Yeah. So that's a very good cause. You know, the professional athletes and all of that walk their animals that are up for adoption from Barks, mm -hmm. a shelter here in Baltimore. And we'll, we'll we'll link it all down below on the, yes, on the yes. episode. Yes, it's course. it's awesome. So then I wo I went to walk, and they gave me this little dog, and she was just the cutest thing ever. So I was like. I don't want to give this dog back. <laughs> so then I set up, you know, the next day I went back there at Barks and then I met her again. I was like, no, that's it. It's mine. I, I love it. Yeah. So I bottom line is I also feel like a lot of if I, I come to a country, I don't have any family here. Right. So if I want to meet somebody that's nice, I bet you that I'm going to find nice people in cherries. You know, because that's where the nice people are. They're helping others. They're good hearts. So I find so many, I'm so many friends through those things because this is what I think we should use. You should use your name to be a good, you know, home mother for the kids. They watching you 24 seven. They, they see what you're doing. And if, if, if I think it's okay to be drinking every day and post every day about being drinking, I think the kid that look up for me and trying to be me, We'll, we'll maybe do what I do. So, you know, you really got to watch out for what you do in social media and, and stuff like that. So I try to be positive. I try to show everything I do off the field to help others. And I really, I do love it. I think everybody needs to spend their time, the their spare time that you have. Sometimes you don't have much, but you do need to find a little bit of your time to donate to others. And you don't have to donate money. You can donate your time. You can work for something. It's endless. And I, I, I want to be a person that, <laughs> I say this all the time, in 10 years from now, 20 years from now, when I retired and I'm not playing, I, I, I care about what people think about William as far as a goalkeeper. Yes, I do. But once I retire 20 years from now, I want you to remember what I've done. And then that's not even soccer. I just, I went to a school last week to talk about, you know, a community uh, school right here in uh, in the city. And one kid asked me that question. And I, I mentioned about Kobe Bryant. Mm. Okay, so he passed. And uh, uh, what is everybody, peace. yes. But what is everybody talking about? Does much people talk about the player that he was? 
or everybody's talking about the dad that he was, how much he was helping uh, the events and cherries and, and others, the person that he was off the field. That's what everybody's talking about. So that legacy that he left was not the amazing player, amazing player that he was, but what kind of person he was. So a great dad, you know? And, and this is what I want to be reminded for. Like, yes, he was a great player, whatever. Sagu was better. Keith O'Neill was better. William was better. We don't care. I want to be the best person I can be. That's that's really that's really beautiful and that, that that's amazing. You know, because in the end of the day, the game. I mean, to, I I don't think I'd ever say this to a sports player, but it's it's just a game. I agree. The game is just a game. hundred percent. Your, your legacy isn't. I mean, of course, you're, you're you know you you have your legacy on the field and how many, you know, saves you've made or whatever. But in the end of the day, it's who you are as a person. Of people are you know are are fans of you in terms of what you do, what you do with your time. You are a role model. At the end of the day, people do look up to you, especially a lot of young kids. Do you feel that pressure? Do you feel like you're on all the time in terms of that the world is constantly watching you? People are watching you. It's hard sometimes. You want to have a bad day. Sometimes you want to just let it go, or you're just constantly on you're, you're you're constantly being pushed and, and being watched obviously i'm not on the level of you know an nfl player or a big star uh so i think you're a big star yes <laughs> but no um so it's it's hard to say because obviously if you are messy you would never be able to walk on the street by yourself and and that it probably be it must be really hard on well, my case i have no problems on that but people are always watching. So Friday I went to a place and then I got a text message from uh, somebody's like, oh, my wife just saw you, you're limping. Are you okay? Are you going to play tomorrow? <laughs> and I was fine. I was just probably tired from train session or whatever. So they always watching. Uh, but I, I, I don't feel pressure. I feel good about it. And again, it comes back again. Like I, I want to help and I want these kids to be following a good lead. So if I can be a a good leader and and i make mistakes i make a lot of mistakes in the games off the field on the field with my teammates with my coach and with my wife we all make mistakes you know uh, the beauty of your life is can you you move on and learn from them uh, as far as the the pressure in what you do i gotta give you that from the school i went last week i went on monday and we lost a game that it was very important for us on sunday so I was beat up at home, you know, blaming myself. We lost the game, it's goalkeeper's fault, regardless what happened on the field. So I was going to blame myself first place. Uh, so I was trying to think, watching the game, and see what could have done better. And I had a bad, bad night, you know. You can't sleep, watch the game twice. Then next morning, you know, I made this commitment to go to the school. So I go to the school, and my mindset still really, you know, bad. It's sad. Then I got there. And then I started to interact with the kids and I started to hear their stories. And then I started to realize it's just a game, like you just said. They, they, they don't care if you win or lose. You're still a hero to them. I, I work really hard and I knew I gave everything I had. I'm super sad, but we have another chance tomorrow. And what is, what's bigger out there? Like I just went to the hospital to see Kylie today and she's facing something much bigger than the loss I had in the game. This is the real challenge in life. So I, I know I hate to lose. I, I, I hate to lose, you know, rock, paper, scissors. I'm so competitive. <laughs> I am. I can't lose in anything. But the, but Wait, are you ready? Yeah, no, no, uh, but at the end of the day, man, I seriously, it's just a game. And, and it's a lot worse out there. You know, the, the world became such a bad place. And we need to make this a little bit better. So if I can help in any way, and this this is my real job. This is my real challenge. How how do you deal with it mentally when you when you lose a game when you come home? Like does it does it really does it affect you mentally? Does, oh, it does. Does it hard to get over it? Do you have a? My mom doesn't text me for three days because she knows. Oh really? Yeah, I'm 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 already knowing by being grumpy. Okay, so super grumpy, especially as a player. I am. I'm always complaining. I'm always screaming. That's a goalkeeper's job. But. Uh, I'm I'm super hard on myself, and I really all the fans can blame me for whatever happened on the field. I I will blame myself much earlier than they will, cause I'm super hard on me. 
So I go home, I try to watch it again on tape, and that makes it even worse because when you see yourself on tape, it looks even worse. It was like, what am I doing? How am I thinking this? What did I do? Um, <clears throat> it's hard. Mindset. And again, the goalie doesn't have a chance to make up for. Yeah. Like a striker, that a forward miss a, a chance to score, and everybody's like, oh, my God, how did he miss that? Two minutes later, the ball will go back to him. He has another chance. The goalie doesn't have another chance. Do you, on the flip side, do you celebrate whole and hard when you win? Or is it like, okay, great, we won? It's more great that we won. Yeah, I, I was I was listening to a different podcast this week where someone was talking about how she played professional tennis her whole life. And she said that she had to get out of it because it was to the point where she was so hard on herself when she lost that when she won, she no longer even felt excited anymore. She was just like, okay, I had to win. But when I lose, it was like detrimental to her. Do you at least allow yourself to celebrate the wins? Unless it's a championship, actually, no. Yeah. Really? No. So you don't. I'm again, the, and I I can really understand as you're saying. I was I completely understand why, because it's a lot of pressure, and the goalkeeper feels a lot of pressure, and it's so easy for people to sit in out there and just you know, blame a goalie. And I'm not talking about me. Like, I'm talking about a young kid that's nine years old playing a, a game because he loves and he gets a goal scored and now the parents are yelling at the kid and the coach is screaming at the kid. The teammates are screaming at the goalie and the poor kid is just nine years old trying to have some fun out there. So imagine, it, you know, the pressure that I deal with when all the fans are like, okay, we lost because of you or whatever. Uh, it's 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 really tough mentally. It's it's super tough. So I don't I don't think I can I I don't think I celebrate any wins. Really, I yeah. think I think more people should, and I think you should. I think that you know people should celebrate their success, and I I can relate to it a little bit also as an actor. You know, because when I when I act uh, when I when I audition for things that I don't get, I'm always like oh, I could have done better. I should have done better. I could have whatever. And then when I get the part, something you know the on the the roles that I do play, I'm like oh, okay, great. Now I'm gonna mess it up. I know, you know what I mean. So it's it's constantly in your in your head. You always have something that you're battling internally because people are their own worst critics. Yes, I you am. know. Um, when when you lose or if you lose or when you win, do you celebrate with the team? Do you get along with your teammates? Are you are you guys a, a family? We really call ourselves a family away from family. So on our team, we have I think nine or ten other Brazilian guys. Really? They're, yes, they're born in Brazil, or they move earlier here, or or they I'm, just I'm came. Sometimes there's soccer. something about Brazil. Yeah, soccer. well, soccer. You well, know. something about soccer and yeah, Brazil. It's yeah, it's just the reality. But you know, we we always try to get together and 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 see if we can hang out. We call we call ourselves family from family, and it is true. We help each other in anything. You know, like whatever. One of our my teammates um, just got a new baby. And then I was watching his dog for like two days, trying to help. Uh, you know, we help each other. We definitely help each other. Uh, relationship is really cool, and we're being here for longer, so obviously that helps as well. Uh, then you have the other new guys, their first year in the team, trying to, you know, bring them to your side and make them see what we do. It's always a, a challenge as well, but uh, trying to hang out as much as we can. Christmas I host. You know, Christmas party. We try to get barbecue stuff like that together. Does it does it help the team play be better when the teammates get along? Or have you, have you ever been a part of a team where the the teammates did not get along off the field? Or and and did that affect the game? I've been both. Uh, to be honest, there are some games in some teams that the players don't like each other, but they do their job, so they know what to do, and they're professional enough to just do their jobs as a, as a players and all together comes it comes and works uh obviously if you have a good connection with the players helps on our our case it's funny because we're best friends and we are and we fight all the time train sessions games locker rooms and it is that like you know it's a it's a cursing here and there we push each other whatever and then another friend comes hey, hey guys chill let's move on let's move on and two seconds later you're like oh i'm sorry hug here and then let's go again it, it sounds like a real family it is family it's, a, it's your fights. brother we always say this look you have a young brother you fight with your brother you beat the crap out of your brother and you guys are not talking <laughs> So you're not talking. You hate your brother. You want him dead. But you walk off this stage 
and then somebody comes and tries to fight your brother, you're going to get in front of him and protect 100%. him. But you actually don't even talk to your brother that time. But he remains your brother, the guy that you love. You do anything for him. We say this all the time. So you get in front of people the 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 protect your family. So we do the same. Obviously, um, again, as a player, it, you get exposed. So you see that in the camera, on the video, that we exchange words, so whatever that case might be. But Why do you think it is that soccer isn't so popular in america and where do you did you see a shift in america as as people are getting more interested in it where do you hope the um soccer leads to in in america like moving forward from here and, and how has it changed in the last few years uh i think the again you have so many sports here and i think americans create the football that you call football to to be competitive with soccer in a way so you're just trying to get the same thing and make it special and you know became a thing and and everybody follows with that other sports as well and in brazil either you watching soccer or you watching soccer it's nothing else on tv for you to actually watch but um I, I believe soccer is getting bigger and bigger here. Um, the fact that all the kids playing soccer, like almost every kid here plays soccer. Either they play rec or they're playing club or travel, but, you know, for fun. Parents love because they run and then they get tired. It's so good, right? Uh, <laughs> the soccer moms love yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> the uh, soccer moms love You know, they run, they get tired, they go home, they want to nap. So great, it works, you know. Get outside, you know, have have interact with kids which is very important those days people with kids just want to play video games so once they go outside and they have to do a conversation one v one is it's important too uh it's getting better but we'll never get on the level of other countries that are breathing soccer do you think america will ever get to a place where they're gonna have soccer players like where soccer will be as big as you know the nfl or the nba or, or ML, you know baseball or anything like that very hard to project i wish i hope but uh i think it's slowly getting uh in a better place and the kids are playing less uh american football you know i, I guess parents are start to realize that concussion is a thing and it they get a lot of injuries from not that you don't have injuries on soccer but you know maybe that might be a reason and uh I don't. I don't think you ever gonna get closer to those top countries. That the competition again. You're losing players. I always mention that. Can you imagine if instead have ten different sports here, you only have soccer? So all these freaking athletes that America have all went to play soccer, and you have a Michael Jordan soccer player somehow playing defender. I don't know. Right. Can you imagine um, Tim Howard, which was probably the best goalkeeper American ever had. He was a basketball player until his senior year of high school. Really? And he was really good. So, you know, and trying to decide which one to because pick. That, that, that's so interesting to me because you, you've been training to be a goal player literally since you're four years old. Yes. And this kid, you know, only starts tr training after high school. So, like... I, that, that you know it's it's weird because you you would think you have to train your entire life for kind of like the whole beginning part of this episode if we had talked about it yes and no on his specific case and then when you're goalkeeper um it's a little bit different and i i mentioned to this and people always think that's a very interesting point if you go in brazil to try to find a goalie you're gonna struggle your whole life because nobody wants to be a goalie everybody wants to be a field player because once you're born they make you kick here they make you catch so he already had being a basketball player oh. eye hand coordination the catch so you know at least how to grab a ball and block it that's Vers so smart I yeah, didn't even think versus you don't have the full coordination so if he was a field player he would never be able to play professional or find a team on the high school year senior year in high school trying to play soccer first time so you know you know what this means that when you're done with soccer, you got to go play basketball. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I wish I can't, I can't. Uh, but they they get that part. So the eye hand coordinate. It's easier to find a goalkeeper here, and you find every single soccer team has two or three guys that actually go in the goal because they like it. It's eye hand coordinate. So so the question really isn't why doesn't 
America loves soccer as much, it's why doesn't Brazil like any other sport? That might than, be a other great than, question. Other than soccer. Yes, we should. <laughs> we actually should. I, in the, when I speak about soccer, I'm not, I, I learn how to accept each country uh, and their difference and understand their difference. It's not that Brazil is better than U.S. or Italian is better than Japan. They are different in their way, and I learn how to respect them all. So I think it's great that you offer a lot of different options for the kids, and they have to experience that. I tell my goalies, the kids that I coach, is like, you should go see other sports too. Because maybe the Like, the, like the story you told me about the, the kid with, yeah, the, with exactly. the baseball. Yeah. So I love that, and I, I don't think Brazil give you that option, so then you kind of force it, but you know it's a give and take we we breed soccer so it's a little bit different but yeah it's, it's 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 ingrained in the culture there yeah um speaking of the we, we, we talked a little bit about injuries before so you've you've had some really bad injuries before yeah um do you feel like you're putting your life at risk uh not my life per se that i would die doing what i do but i i put my body on risk every day um obviously especially being a goalkeeper because you're facing shots coming at you at crazy speed you don't see it and it's always you get you're getting all different kind of injuries every single time you play so i do feel that i put my body in risk and every day that i leave the field and i'm healthy i was like oh thank god it's it's a great day <laughs> every time you, you you're able to walk out of the field, yeah, yeah. i was like day. no injuries nothing happened i tell my trainer that's a good day. Good day. See you on Monday. I don't have to call you tomorrow <laughs> to make something. Wh- what good. is what is the worst uh, injury you've had while while playing? Um, I had the um, ACL uh, surgeries on my knees, so I have three ACL surgeries. So that's uh, a pretty tough one. The recovery is the worst part of that because it takes you about ten months to to be back. Really? And yes. Eight 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 months the a year. It's the time frame. So it really depends on each case. But um I had a a groin uh I tore my groin two years ago in the game and that was a, a tough one. And do you keep playing when you have it when you have I injury? tried, but I tore so they completely detached my groin detached. So it's like kinda of my leg was not attached to my groin. Uh, so I try and I, st- I, I really try it. I, I stand up and I said, I want to play because I thought I could play. I tried to take a step. I, I couldn't. So I fell back on the floor and then I had to leave the field. And uh, the, I was off for 62 days and I came back to play the semifinal game. And I played back and I played, we won and I played the championship game down in Mexico and uh, we won the championship. That's the last championship we won. Uh, and I was named MVP of the the championship with a lot of saves. And I had a tour groin, so it's, I had the surgery afterwards. It's yeah. it's amazing. You really you you. It's 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 more than like the 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 rest of the world sees what you play, right? There's a game tonight or a game here, but you really sacrifice. Ev- you you live and breathe soccer every single day of your life. Everything you're doing. I mean, you know, to the point where you're putting yourself injured, you know, you're, you're possibly getting injured. Um, the, the the training process that goes into it, do you have to follow a strict diet throughout the entire year? Do you have to train? Like, what what, what is the training like out off of the field? Yeah. Uh, you have to take care of your body. You have to be able to perform. So um, you're trying to be in a, in a decent shape over the, the summer when you're off season you kind of relax a little bit so you're always gonna get some pounds that you have to you're trying to rest your body and and you know you beat up at the end of this the the season so um once i would say starting in august you start to get yourself you know in shape going to the gym maybe you start to lift run which i love (laughs) uh and all that kind of stuff to, to, to be prepared I also coach at John Hopkins, so it's a college, and I, I had the you know the opportunity I can train with them as well. So it's always good. I, I I go back, I train with them here and there, try to kick around, get my goalkeepers to give me some reps. So what they do, I actually ended up doing. So it's good for them as well because they see me doing, but it's good for me because I start to prepare myself. So so how many how many hours a day do you spend uh, training? Off season, I can say not much. Uh, I'll go to the gym 
probably will take you an hour and a half. And uh, maybe you do twice a week some conditioning um, that would go 45 minutes an hour and then train with the, the goal is another 45 minutes, I would say. And when you're on season? On season, it really depends on the, the week schedule. Preseason is pretty heavy. Uh, but when the season starts, it's kind of flowing in between how many games you have on the week. Like two weeks ago, we had three games, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So during that week, Monday to Thursday, you don't do much because, you know, you don't want to get too tired that you come on Friday and you already have something on your legs. Your legs are already have from the week, and then you're playing three games. But if you, you know, train on Monday to Friday and you have a game on Saturday, then you kind of, like, go a little harder. How, well, what's the average um, amount of time that a, a soccer player professionally can play before they retire? Like, how long do you usually does a career usually last for a soccer player? It really depends. Uh, if you're talking about an outdoor player, uh, I would say they can go into 37. When you 35, the 36, it starts the 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 problem is that the more the game is being changing a lot and uh, the younger players are starting the the take lead and and playing so right now you have 18 year old playing in a in national team so 18 year old running against a 35 year old it's it's kind of tough for you the 35 the the keep it up as a goalie you can go a little longer cuz again you don't run as much so as long as you don't have major injuries i guess do you think about it after for what you're going to do after retirement when the when when you're done playing professionally where you plan on taking your career afterwards? I do, I do. I think it's it you know something that you have to. Uh, been thinking, I continue to think. I th um, I highly believe in God and I think it has a good plan for me. So I I'm not worried about my future because I know something nice will come. But if you want my honest answer, I think I would like to do something with. Um, a cherry or something that I would be able to help people. This is what this is my happy place. I feel good when not I do soccer it. related. No, I want to continue to be involved with soccer, but I I don't want soccer to be my job because I want to teach the kids. But I want to teach the kids because I love to teach them. I don't want that to be my my main focus as like an income, because once you treat that as a job. It doesn't give you the pleasure because then it's a job. Do Do you feel like you accomplished your dreams? Like you've you've accomplished everything you set out to do when you were that nine year old boy living in the academy in Brazil? Not everything, but very close. What do you What What do you still have left to accomplish? Um, not that I will, <laughs> or but yeah, that I I wished you know definitely playing outdoor in a higher level that I did, and get a chance to play for one of the big clubs that I always dreamed to play, you know, the kids' dreams, and uh, maybe play the World Cup for Brazil or no World Cup for uh, outdoor. That was always, you know, a dream that I, every kid in Brazil has. So I had friends that accomplished that, and I did it. So that may be the only piece, but I'm super happy about everything I have and I have done. If you, if you could go back and talk to yourself as a nine-year-old kid or the 15-year-old kid in the academy, what would you go and, and, and tell him, you know, coming from you in 2020? Um, be more patient. Probably would be make different choices or choose wisely what to say. Um, probably struggle too much in life being um, a person that speaks the truth. And I never like the lie so i rather to say the truth in front of you and get punished for versus just you know go behind your back and 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 not be faithful on that on that note so especially on soccer people don't like to hear the truth too much and always being a hard head again you goalie you're crazy so i always been a hard head so i made choices that i should have done so i definitely would tell myself the Take it easy a little bit. Don't know if I can do it right now, but I've been tr <laughs> I've been trying to tell myself it sometimes works. Uh, I've been better, uh, but it's always room for improvements. That's amazing. What's the, been the um, the proudest moment of your career so far?
I would say, honestly, I would say the 2018 championship for the Blast in Mexico that I mentioned before, because I, I, you know, I played through a very, very tough injury to play, and uh, I had the. So, to explain to you better, which people again, you know, people don't think about it. I never felt that much pressure in my entire life that I felt on that day. Even more than the Anything, World Cup? Anything, because if you think about I had to make a decision if I would play or not play. And that decision would affect my team and my best friends and my teammates, you know, and my whole club directly. So the the bottom line is if you decide to play, nobody, nobody will care if you're healthy or not healthy, they need you to perform. To be. And that's why you're there. So nobody will care about your injury. That's what you must understand. Once you step on the field, nobody really cares about what you're dealing with and they will need you to perform. So for me, to go on the field and risk the whole season trying to play, it was a very risky decision obviously but it was very tough on me because i had to make that decision and if i fell uh, it would cost us a championship did anybody advise you not to play mm, no um no uh i gotta recognize the job that our uh staff did for our trainers heather and brian especially to put me back on the field it was outstanding i was doing almost three times a day P, uh, day PT and she always said if you feel good to go you it's it's got to be on you because we don't feel the pain that you do so I felt a lot of pressure on myself again I'm super hard and I did not want the people the I don't want to let anybody down so when we won and I actually was that's the only title individual title that I always proud to say that I accomplished because being MVP uh, after playing with an injury like that, it's the best reward I could actually ask for. That is the only time I actually care about individual uh, status and definitely the best day of my soccer career. Really? it's, it, it's Sitting here just talking to you has been so inspirational, honestly. People love athletes not because they're good at sports, because they follow their dreams. They're so passionate about what they do. They really push themselves through injuries through schooling till midnight in the academy to flying across the world at the age of 17 or 18 you know to you 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 are an example of what an athlete should be and is and can be and, and baltimore is really really proud to have you here what advice do you have for all the young people out there listening who want to be a professional soccer player what would you tell them i would tell them to to be very careful about that choice because it's a lot of costs that you might will take on your life. Your body is going to be beat up and it, it's tough. My advice will be, number one, don't ever give up on school and have school as a number one priority. The U.S. provides you and give you the chance to do both than any other countries do. So you can actually play college here, which is a a good level of soccer and still having your education. So I always advise everybody to continue and finish your degrees, get your education because soccer and any other sports, I'm not, usually I don't speak about soccer. I speak about sports because it could be any other sports. Yeah, for sure. Any you sport, know? any athlete. I will always say it, it, it does not only depends on you. It, it's funny. You can be the, the driven person in the world. You can work harder than anybody else and just not happen because your agent didn't help you because the chance was not there because it wasn't your day and you got an injury. You know, there are things that you cannot control that will cost you, you know, the whole career. And that's why I always advise everybody get your degree because if you don't have the soccer on your pad or the sport that you want to play, we can always go back and, and find a job and, and, and build a family, have a kid. Soccer is great, but have a backup plan. You, that's not, I think the soccer would be the backup plan and the school will be the plan. Really? Um, I did want to do something a little bit special for this episode. 
because it's not every day that we get to sit down with uh, a star player like you. So I did want to do something special for one of our listeners out there. To anybody who is uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel, follows you on Instagram, and follows uh, the It's My Job to Know Yours on Instagram, we're going to link it all down below. Um, I brought a soccer ball along, and if you can have, uh, if you can autograph it for us, I'd love to give it away to one of our subscribers, someone who lives in the U.S. Would you be willing to do that for us? Oh, of course. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. So, I have here, I got you a uh, a soccer ball to autograph, and I even brought you one of these, if you can. uh, From from it's my job to know yours, you know the. You, you're seeing it here live. William Vinzella, everybody, is uh, autographing a soccer ball for us. There you go. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. There you have it, folks. If you want to win this soccer ball signed by William Vinzella, you have to be uh, subscribed on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram. Follow, follow William on Instagram. Um, and we will choose a winner from someone who lives in the continental U.S., William, thank you so much for being here today. This has been an eye-opening experience. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you for all that you do for the community. Thank you for you know Baltimore, for America, for everyone. You're, you're an amazing guest to have and an amazing athlete, and I really just thank you for being here today. Oh, thank you for inviting. It was very nice to talk to you, and I hope that people that are listening uh, can think about, especially it doesn't matter what job do you do, it doesn't matter what you have in life, it's always room for you to help others. So if we can always open our eyes and try to be a better person. That's probably my goal in life to spread that word. So thank you very much for listening. and Hopefully we can all be better tomorrow. I couldn't have said it better myself. This is Red Younger from It's My Job to Know Yours. Thank you so much. Well, I just did my job, so now it's time for you to do your job, which is to hit that subscribe button. Because if you don't do your job, I'm going to lose my job, and let's face it, I'm qualified for nothing.